A lot of you asked me in the comments, why is the potential difference across the battery the same as the potential difference across the resistor? So let's explore that. To explore that, let's figure out exactly how electrons move inside the wire. And to do that, I'm just gonna ignore all the electrons that are there and just concentrate on one of the electrons. So if you look at an electron inside, say, a battery somewhere over here, then you can see that it's being pushed by the negative terminal of the battery and pulled by the positive terminal of the battery, which means the electron experiences an electric push in the downward direction. And if you consider that same electron outside the battery, same thing happens. It experiences a push from the negative terminal and a pull from the positive terminal, which means it experiences a push in this direction over here. Right, so both inside and outside the battery, it gets pulled towards the positive charge. And as a result, what ends up happening? Well, if the battery was not working, the electrons would just sit over here, right? Because they just like to chill towards the positive charge. But because the battery is working, it has internal chemical reactions going on. These chemical reactions push the electrons from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And this push is slightly bigger than the electric push. As a result, what happens? Well, the electrons get pushed from here to here due to the chemical forces against the electric repulsion, and then they fall back. Then again, they get pushed up against the electric forces due to the chemical forces, and then they fall back due to electric forces. This is very, very similar to a kid on the slide. The parent over here is like the battery who's pushing the kid against gravity. Un gravity is like electric force over here, all right? Then the kid comes back due to gravity and then the cycle repeats. But there's one major difference. Inside our circuit, we're assuming that there is no resistance in the wire. We're assuming all the resistance is concentrated in this tiny section, which we call the resistor, and there are no resistances over here. Because of that, electrons move differently in the resistor and inside the wire. See, inside the resistor, if I could zoom in to the resistor, because it has a lot of resistance, it has a lot of obstructions, we can assume that, we can imagine this is like a pipe where there are a lot of obstructions over here. As a result, when this electron tries to go, sorry, when the electron tries to go through this, it bumps into these atoms. It keeps on bumping, it keeps on going back and forth and bumping. But because there is an electric push, that electric push is the one that ensures that the electron just keeps going through, all right? So you have to imagine that the electric bumping, 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 bumping. So it bumps, 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 And then because of the electric push, it finally makes through the resistor. However, in the wire, we're assuming that there is absolutely no resistance over here, all right? Now, of course, such wires do exist. We call them as superconductors, and turns out that the way electrons move inside superconductors is not very straightforward, requires quantum mechanical treatment, but we are just using, going to use Newtonian mechanics. So over here, since there is absolutely no um, obstruction, electrons over here, we're gonna assume just moves in straight line. Just moves in straight line. All right, that poses a problem. Here's the problem. See, if the electrons are being pushed with the same force here in the wire, and here in the resistor, then what would happen is that that force in the wire would just nicely accelerate and speed up the electrons. So in the wires, the electrons would be moving very fast, very high current. But inside the resistor, it would be moving very slowly, very low current. So that can't happen because we've already seen in our previous video that the current everywhere in the wire must stay the same. So how does that happen? How do you make sure the current here and the current here is exactly the same. The way it happens is that the forces inside the wire is not exactly the same everywhere. In fact, because inside the wire there is no obstruction, the electrons don't need a force to move through the wire. Again, go back to classical mechanics. Um, things in motion tend to stay in motion forever, Newton's first law, right? Again, reminder, Newton's laws don't work at the electron level, but we're gonna use the classical model. So inside the wire, you have zero force. No force here, all right? So I'm just gonna draw this force. I'm just gonna put a cross mark over here saying that electrons don't need a force to move to the, through the wire. But inside the resistor, 
there will be a very strong force because electrons do need a force to move inside the wire. I think this is the most important part actually to identify, which means if I look inside the wire, the forces are not everywhere. So I have to delete the forces. The, for the only force that will exist is in the resistor. Now you might say, Mahesh, how does that happen? I mean, it's hard for me to imagine because you might say, well, when the electron is here, doesn't it get pushed by the negative terminal over here? How can you, how, how does it ensure that there are no forces in the wire? That's a beautiful question. And we'll not talk, tackle that question in this video because to answer that question, we need to look at what happens to the circuit the moment you close the switch. There is a temporary stage in which things look different and it takes some time for the temporary stage to die out. And it's during that temporary stage all these things are happening. The electric forces automatically balance and the forces in the wire disappears and the forces in the resistor, same, all of that is happening. And if you're interested, we'll deep dive into that in a separate video. So let me know in the comments if, if you want to learn about that. <coughs> but over here, at least logically, because the current is the same everywhere, logically it makes sense that there shouldn't be any force in the wires and all the force must be concentrated in the resistor, right? And you can immediately see this is sort of kind of the reason, the main reason why the potential difference across the battery is the same as the potential difference across the resistor because all the force of the battery is only concentrated in the resistor. But now let's answer that question more rigorously. To go from forces to potential difference, we need to ask ourselves what exactly is potential difference? What exactly is potential energy? And for that, I always love to go back to something I can visualize, which is gravity. So let's just think about what gravity is doing when the kid goes from point A to point B. Notice that gravity is pushing down and the kid is going upwards. Whenever you are pushing in one direction and the object is moving in the opposite direction, you gain energy. For example, if somebody throws a ball at you and you try to stop that ball, you're pushing the ball this way, but your hand is going in the opposite direction, you gain, you sap the energy from the ball, right? The kinetic energy of the ball decreases, the ball slows down and that energy comes to your hand. You don't feel energetic, but because it con converts into heat and maybe some muscular tears might happen if the ball comes around. But at the end of the day, you are sapping energy from that object, right? Same thing is happening over here. As the kid goes from point A to point B, because it's going against the four, against gravity, gravity is sapping energy from the kid. But where is the kid getting that energy from? Like to sap the energy, the kid must have had energy to begin with. Oh, that the energy, the parent is transferring, okay? The parent is transferring because parent is pushing the kid. So you can imagine that as the kid goes up, the parent transfers the energy into the kid and the kid transfers that energy and the gravity saps that energy from the kid and stores it as potential energy. That's how potential energy increases when you go from here to here. When you go against gravity, potential energy increases. And then what happens when you let go and then the, and the kid comes back? Well, now gravity is pushing the kid and giving back that energy, all right? Now gravity is, is doing the positive work over here. And so that's when the potential energy decreases, all right? Now what's important is that when you go up from A to B, the, the work done by gravity is exactly the same as when you go from B to A. Um, it's just that in from when you go from A to B, gravity and the force is in the, uh, gravity in the direction of motion is in the opposite direction. But when you go from B to A, they're in the same direction. So the work done F times D stays exactly the same. In one case, it's taking energy by doing what we call negative work. And in the second case, it's giving energy in what we call doing positive work. Since the work done is exactly the same by the gravity, in one case negative, in one case positive, uh, whatever is the potential energy gained when you go against gravity, same must be the potential energy lost when you go in the direction of gravity. Does that make sense? The same thing would happen over here. Let's just, let's just do sense check. Let's just see if we understood that this, this is the important part. As the electron goes from here to here, the same thing happens. Notice it's going against the electric force. And so the electric force saps energy from that electron. And where did that energy come from? A, 
that energy came from the chemical. So the chemicals are storing energy. So the, chemi the chemical force is giving energy into the electron and this electric force is sapping that energy into the from the electron and it's, and it's transferring it as potential energy, all right? It's storing it as a potential energy. So the potential energy increases, 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 increases okay? Let's say the electron did not make it all the way till here. We let go of that electron. Somehow the battery got switched off. They would come back. And when it comes back, I hope you agree now that all that potential energy would be lost um, in, in some form of energy, maybe heat or maybe kinetic energy, but all of that energy which was gained would be lost. And so I could say that at this point, the electrons have high potential energy, high potential energy. And at this point, the electrons have low potential energy. All right, so I'm gonna call PE for potential energy. Okay, now here is the important thing. Let's go back to gravity. Here's the important thing, all right? It doesn't matter in what path the boy moves from point B to point A. Doesn't matter what path it takes, whether it goes straight down or it takes some other curvy path. If you do the math, you will find that the work done by gravity stays exactly the same. Whatever work that the gravity does when it goes from here to here, it is exactly the same work when gravity, um, when, when the kid goes from here to here, which means that it doesn't matter how you go from here to here, the potential energy lost would be exactly the same, exactly. So it all, what it all means is that when the kid went from A to B, if the potential energy increased by say seven joules, as an example, it, the kid gained seven joules of potential energy, when it goes back, whatever path it takes, all right, whatever path it takes, it will lose all of that seven joules of potential energy. Does that make sense? Okay, and the second important thing is that you gain potential energy when you go against gravity, you lose potential energy when you go in the direction of gravity. Does that make sense? All right, the same thing will happen over here as well. When the electron goes against the electric force, it gains potential energy. Let's say seven joules. Okay, now electrons actually gain very tiny amount of potential energy because they are so minuscule and they have such a small charge. So I'm just gonna say seven units of potential energy. It's gonna be some 10 to the power minus minus something. All right, now here's the important part, okay. What happens to its potential energy when it goes from here to here? What happens to its potential energy? Nothing, because there are no forces acting in the wire. We just accomplished that, all right? So there is, and let me write that down, from here to here, no change in potential energy, no change in potential energy. And therefore, even at this point, the potential energy is high, high potential energy. All right, what happens inside the resistor? Ooh, inside the resistor, the, there is a force. Inside the resistor, the electric force will accelerate the charge, will convert potential energy into kinetic energy, just like how the kids are moving through the slide. But the moment it accelerates, it bumps into the atom, loses all that kinetic energy, and transfers it to the vibrations of the atom making heat, which means the potential energy is getting converted into heat. And then again, um, because of the electric push, it accelerates, some of the potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy and gets converted to heat. And that keeps on happening, potential energy loses, 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 loses. And by the time it comes over here, it would have lost some potential energy. But how much? How much potential energy would it have lost? Well, I know that in the rest of the wire, it's not gonna lose any more potential energy because there are no forces in the rest of the wire. All right, so I know here also, let me see, let me write that down. Here also there is no change in potential energy. But I also know that when the electron comes all the way here, it must have lost all its potential energy because of what we discussed, right? Because of the nature of gravity, the same nature of electric things. It must have lost all its potential energy because it doesn't matter um, from how, how you go from here to here. We know that if it, if it went straight like this, we know, we agree that it would have lost all its potential energy because the, the electric field would do, electric force would do the same amount of work. So I know that even if it goes from here to here, it would have lost all that potential energy. But I know that there is no change over here, which means, which could only mean by the time the electron has come over here, it must have lost 
all its potential energy. And the way it ensures that is that this force in the wire just adjusts itself in such a way that it ensures that all the potential energy would be lost when it's, it's, it's over here. So over here, it would have lost all its potential energy <coughs> and it would be at the low potential energy and then there would be no change over here. So long story short, whatever potential energy that the electrons gain over here, all of that potential energy is lost when the electron moves through the resistor because there are no changes in the potential energy anywhere else in the wire. Now, let's come to potential difference. The potential energy gained or lost by an electron is basically what we, basically potential difference. The only difference, is, I mean, the only small thing is that we don't talk about the energy gained or lost by one electron because like I said, the electron gained or lost by one electron is very tiny because electrons have very tiny charge. So instead we think in terms of not one electron, but a, a lot of electrons, how many? Uh, so much electrons, which has a total charge of one coulomb. So you can imagine one coulomb of electrons, all right? So what I mean is, if let's say when, now let's imagine this is not just one electron. Let's imagine this is, I'm just gonna change this for now. Oops, wait one second. Okay, I'm gonna change this and it's gonna imagine that this is one coulomb of electrons, lots and lots. Like how many, how many electrons do we have in one coulomb? Do you know that? Yeah, there's a lot, it's a lot. That's important, okay. So imagine when this one coulomb of electron goes from here to here, let's say the battery gives it nine joules or seven joules of energy. Let's use the same number, seven joules of energy. Then we will say the potential difference over here is seven volt. Seven volt basically means seven joules of energy transfer per coulomb. How much energy transfer per coulomb is what we call potential difference. All right, now, as it goes from here to here, there is no change in the potential energy, but then as it goes, now, as it goes from here to here, there is no change in the potential energy. So there is no potential difference over here, from here to here. But now as it goes through the resistor, we know that it loses all of that potential energy, which means it loses all that seven joules, which means bada boom, bada bing. What is the potential difference across the resistor? It has to be exactly seven volt it because the coulomb has lost all its energy. And as a result, right in front of your eyes, the potential difference across the battery is exactly the same as the potential difference across the resistor. So what's the main reason? To summarize all of this, why is this happening? Because all the forces from the battery is localized, it's concentrated in the resistor. That's why all the potential energy loss happens in the resistor. Why is that happening? because the rest of the wire has no resistance and therefore the only way to make sure that, this, that, the, that the current is the same everywhere in the circuit is to ensure that there is no forces inside the wire. Therefore, there's no potential energy loss inside the wire. And how does the circuit just like knows all of this that, you know, oh yeah, all my force needs to be concentrated in the wire, uh, in the resistor, and how does it set up all of that? That's something that we'll discuss in a separate video altogether. All right, a last point of confusion could be, you might say, Mahesh, you said that this is, um, the, this negative side has high potential energy for electrons, but wait a second, you know, isn't this low potential? Like negative should be low potential and positive should be high potential, isn't it? Like then what's going on over here? Well, the simple answer is our standards of whether we call something low or we call something high is for in terms of positive charge. If you look at a positive charge, think about a positive charge somewhere over here, then you see the electric force on it would be exactly opposite. It would tend to go up over here. Naturally, it would tend to go this way. And that's why we say that, hey, this is the low potential, this is the high potential. Everything is exactly <coughs> the opposite for a positive charge and our definition is in terms of the positive charge and that's basically why we say this is high and this is low. For negative charge, it would be the exact opposite and yes, negative charge, or when it's close to the negative of the battery, it would be having high potential energy. That is true. It's just that um, we define potential
potential in terms of positive charge and therefore we say that the negative has lower potential. It's also the reason why we say the current is in the opposite direction. Not that they, because ele electrons are going this way, but we tend to think in terms of positive charge. So even though there is nothing that's going in the opposite direction, we like to assume that if there was a positive charge, it would have gone in the opposite direction. And that's why we say the current is in the opposite direction. I know we're not being fair to electrons and it, you have you can blame Benjamin Franklin for that. He, he is the reason for all of this.